What? All right, ready, get set, go! One, two, three, four, five, what are you doing? six, seven, Why aren't you trying eight. to go get some? Welcome. It's your friendly neighborhood, Badger here, and I'm back for the next disgustingly potent boss killer, General's Cry. Now, unlike many of my other build guides, this one will focus on the skill itself and will give you options between the two ascendancies I prefer, the two skills I prefer, softcore versus hardcore versions, plus mega budget options as well. I mean, just look at this POB warrior-like damage coming out of my fully geared and decked out berserker version. It's too much. You don't need this. General's Cry has flown slightly under the radar in my opinion, and if utilized correctly, can output some insane damage and gift extreme survivability, with options to scale into the damage or defense either side. Basically, my endgame character fits right about here on the diagram, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will know enough to be able to choose your playstyle accordingly. For those unaware of how General's Cry works, it is a Warcry that can be linked to any melee attack skill, and when the Warcry is used, if there are corpses nearby, it summons up to 5 Generals that seek out mobs, attack once with the linked attack skill gem, and dissipate. With the benefit of being able to pick and choose almost any melee skill you want to play within General's Cry, this skill is extremely versatile, and is just disgusting when paired with what I consider the only mandatory unique for the build, Red Blade Banner. This shield gives you immense cooldown recovery for your General's Cry, and has the unique modifier, Your Warcries Have Infinite Power. In a nutshell, this just means you will always spawn 5 Generals, or 6 with the Helmet Enchant, per Warcry, provided there are enough corpses nearby. In the next section, I will go over the exact mechanics of corpses, the skill itself, and the build I use, but first, check out the color bar below. If you would like to jump to any section in particular, just click on the corresponding color. And, as always, all corresponding Path of Building links will be down below in the description, so feel free to open them up and follow along. However, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, it's time for me to talk about the general mechanics of this build. So to begin with, as mentioned before in the introduction, this is a General's Cry build guide, and we're going to be focusing mainly on Berserker, but there are uh, champion options in the POB options and hardcore versions and everything like that, and I'll mention all of that kind of stuff when we do get to it. Uh, and the very first thing that I do also want to mention here is we are playing the Omega LOL uh, ZHP crazy DPS version of the build. Uh, so with uh, just shy of 5k life, it's probably not what you need to play because the damage is too much, as you may have seen uh, previously as well. But I've been having a lot of fun just absolutely decimating bosses. If you want to do that too on softcore, uh, go for it and just like slam on an Abyssus, use Aspect of Carnage from the Berserker, do some crazy amounts of damage, but do not play this variation in hardcore. You will die. Uh, just, you'll die straight up uh, many, many times. Uh, so we're going to showcase the build, but first we're going to talk about General's Cry and why it's so crazily overpowered with what we're doing here. So basically on the build, we just Cyclone and cast while channeling Desecrate to spawn corpses, and then left-click Instant War Cry General's Cry to summon these generals here, which run around, they seek out enemies, they attack with whatever linked skill you've got. Right now there's Blade Flurry, but I mostly like to play with Perforate, because it's got a great uh, difference between clear and uh, boss damage there, which is uh, very nice to just switch with your blood and sand. But uh, yeah, the gameplay is very, very smooth. Basically, it's just walking around, holding left click or uh, anything else that you want to auto-trigger your General's Cry with, then cycloning through packs, and then the generals will just spawn and deal a crazy amount of damage. Even on a one link cyclone though, your damage is going to be pretty high and is going to clear trash in maps. Uh, but that's, uh, that's basically how it does work. Now there's a few other mechanics going on, and especially with Berserker, uh, it's where you're getting the most damage. Obviously there's two different things uh, where you're getting the most damage, and I'll talk about this more in the uh, passive skill tree section, but Aspect of Carnage is just 40% more damage. We're then also using Warbringer to grant us rage every time that we Warcry with less than 25. 
uh, uh, less than 25 rage. And because we're also using Red Blade Banner, this rage has, uh, sorry, this war cry has infinite power, giving us full rage from one war cry. Now, if we use it above 25, it does sacrifice uh, some uh, some rage there. We can sacrifice rage again, and then you see if we war cry once more, it goes all the way up. So basically, we've just consistently got rage, meaning that we can consistently. Berserk as well. No need for Chainbreaker shenanigans in this build. Uh, now, the other interesting thing about Red Blade Banner, with Warcries having infinite power, this does mean that we always summon up to our maximum amount of generals. Uh, now, an Abyssus with General's Cry and maximum number of Mirage uh, Warriors is around about 20 Exalted Orbs right now. That is probably going to go up in price because uh, it's just what tends to happen with these build guides. Uh, and Red Blade, it's actually, there's a lot of them on the market, so it probably shouldn't go up in price at all. If it does, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, try and get one as quick as you can, if, if that is going to happen. I cannot do and lastly, we're using a Paradoxica. Now, Paradoxica is actually best in slot for the Berserker uh, version of this build. Uh, the reason is all of our attacks do double damage, and with the crazy amount of more multiplier we have around the place, such as Aspect of Carnage, 40% more damage, and Warbringer, uh, exerted attacks deal 50% more damage if a Warcry sacrifice Rage recently. Uh, that 50% more damage counts for your General's Cry attacks. They actually count as exerted attacks, which is pretty crazy for any of your cluster duels as well, giving exerted attacks dealing increased damage. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the uh, gear section as well, all of the cluster duels. So just through these two nodes, we've got 90% more damage. We're then dealing... Uh, 20 to 30 flat physical damage here, which is doubled by Paradoxica. We've got some really nice rings. The uh, flat damage is doubled by Paradoxica. The flat damage from Abyssus is doubled by Paradoxica. Uh, the Rislatha's fizz damage is doubled by Paradoxica. And the Amulet flat fizz damage is also doubled by Paradoxica. Uh, all of this coupled with uh, a few other sources of uh, increased damage and everything like that basically just skyrockets the damage to obscene levels. Uh, if you thought the damage on the Discharge build, my previous build guide, was a lot, this is way too much. But we're going to showcase the build right now. We're going to jump into a Minotaur map. Now, as I did say, this is the crazy DPS uh, ZHP version of the build, so there's actually a chance that I might die in this map, uh, because that's just how I built the build. But don't take that as the build uh, being bad. It's just, take it as me being stupid and not actually putting defenses into the build, because I want to try and juice out the damage as much as I can. But you'll get a uh, general gist of how the build actually works. So, we've got Perforate in. We're going to switch to Sand Stance, clear. And we'll jump into the map, and I'll show you how everything works. So basically, you just jump straight through here. You start cycloning, and then your generals, as you can see there, that kind of yellow sand popping up, is the generals rushing to enemies and using Perforate there. They basically one-hit absolutely anything uh, with their clear Perforate. And honestly, I can boss extremely fine on the clear version of the Perforate as well. But uh, wait till you see the damage on the Phantasmal uh, Perforate. Actually, no, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use Blade Flurry for even more damage against the uh, bosses here, just to see if uh, we can pretty much one-shot the bosses. So that's basically how the build goes. I put my flasks on every now and then. I just uh, spin to win. Uh, yes, it is another spin to win build. Cyclone uh, really seems to take the cake with any sort of cast while channeling Desecrate builds. Uh, I've done it previously on things like my Sentinel Queen in, in previous leagues, uh, the Sentinel of Purity Necromancer, uh, and a bunch of other builds as well that use uh, any sort of cast while channeling. Most of the time you're going to be using Cyclone. But I really enjoy using Cyclone uh, right through here. That is pretty much it to do with the build. You know what? I'm going to chuck on Berserk, I'm going to chuck on my Quicksilver, and we're just going to try and run to the boss here so you can see the final boss damage and hopefully not get one shot by Minotaur because if Minotaur hits us with an Abyss as an aspect of Carnage, we will die. Uh, so let's uh, let's jump on through here and showcase that sexy, sexy damage. All right, here we are. I'm just going to put a portal just for fun. Uh, we're also then going to switch to Blood Stance. We're going to put in our uh, Blade Flurry and we're going to have a nice little look over here. So we're just going to wait for him to uh, kind of dash towards us. I'm going to put everything up, spin to win, uh, and then that's basically it there. He's dead. Uh, and uh, there was actually, if you wanted to pause the video and go frame by frame, there was also uh, another Guardian here. 
but they absolutely disappeared. Let's see if we can find them on the ground here somewhere. There's Minotaur. Uh, who else spawned? There definitely was someone else, or maybe I just killed him too quickly. You know what? I think I actually killed him too quickly that another Guardian did not spawn, uh, because one should have with Shaper and Elder Guardians are healed and joined by an ally on first reaching 33% life. I think what happened is I did a single hit from one of the uh, General's Cry guys with a, a final Blade Flurry exp explosion that probably one-shot Minotaur. Uh, so what actually happened there is the second one didn't spawn. So the damage is just disgusting. You don't need this kind of damage. Now, what can you expect in terms of damage from the Hardcore Viable Champion version? I would say anywhere between one quarter to one half of the damage if you have a lot of currency uh, or a lot of gear in SSF or anything like that. Uh, you can expect a quarter to a half of this kind of damage at maximum investment. And for the budget version, you can expect anywhere from one tenth to one eighth of the damage. However, you know, you think one tenth of the damage, that's like, that's 90% less damage. It's not going to make too much of a difference because the damage is so crazy anyway. So on the budget version of this build, which we're just about to talk about, the budget gear and links, uh, you're still going to be getting some crazy, crazy DPS. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to talk about, obviously, some different uh, helmets that you can use instead of Abyssus in the uh, Gears and Links section as well, both the budget and the end game. Uh, and we're going to talk about Champion as well in all of that. So, without further ado, let's jump over to the budget version of the build. See you soon. Alrighty, time to talk about the budget gear and links for this character. Now, uh, right in front of you here, this is basically everything that I recommend uh, for Softcore Berserker version of the build. Now, the uh, Softcore, uh, I guess, champion version of the build can be built very, very similarly to this. You can basically just slap these items on the champion version and you're going to be absolutely fine. But uh, I'm just going to go through everything here. And when we talk about the end game version, we're going to talk about the items that basically you want to upgrade the first uh, the first items that you want to upgrade hint it's going to be your uh, it's going to be your paradoxica for your sword uh, but uh, let's jump through everything here and I'm going to talk about it all so first of all uh, as I mentioned red blade banner it's kind of mandatory for the build you can get away without it but it's just going to feel so much nicer with red blade banner uh, in your shield option However, on your weapon, uh, I've actually found that the Skaver Gladius uh, Sword is going to basically give you the most bang for your buck. Uh, now, Skaver is a sword that uh, changes a few of its properties based on the uh, sockets that it does have on the items, what color the sockets are. I would recommend having all green sockets here. You can link your Whirling Blades, Faster Attacks, and then like a Portal Gem in there as well, and you can keep all of those green sockets, but we'll talk about that in the links section. So Skaver and uh, Red Blade are extremely budget options right there. Now, for the helmet, uh, if you want a more tankier option than the Abyssus, I would suggest going for a Dade Bellow. Now, Dade Bellow gives you about a, a third of the physical damage to attacks that Abyssus does. It doesn't give you any crit multi, but you do also get basically uh, double onslaught. So 20% increased attack, cast, and movement speed if you walk ride recently. Uh, so this is really, really nice to kind of zip through maps, and this is even good on a hardcore version budget as well. The Dade Bell is absolutely amazing. However, you can notice here, uh, basically, look, all, all I will say is the damage in Path of Building is extremely uh, underwhelming uh, for the build. Uh, you're not dealing 2 million, you're dealing a lot more than that, uh, even just on this gear here. Uh, but I've to, if I was to change the Dade Bellow to Abyssus, we go from 1.8 to uh, 2.3. So you can see here, if I hover over Abyssus, it's around about a 30% damage increase uh, there. But, you know, that's just if you want that extra physical damage taken. For the body armor, I suggest uh, best in slot is going to be a Law Weave. Now, the only real modifier that you want to make sure that you get a good roll on is your maximum resistances are 78. So that goes from anywhere from 76 to 78. Getting 78 basically just means that you can, right over here, as you can see, you can put all of your resistances to 78 rather than 75. Now, uh, the difference between 75 and 78% resistances is basically uh, 3 divided by 25, which is the top of my head is like, uh, it's, it's like, you know, 1 eighth, a little bit less than 1 eighth uh, less damage taken. 
So like 12%, let's say 12% less damage taken from elements, just from uh, Law Weave right there. If I've done the math correctly, comment down below if I absolutely stuff that up. There's a very real possibility. But basically, Law Weave's just making you a lot tankier. It's also going to give you physical damage to attacks, which is really, really good uh, for the build. And even better if you do start using a Paradoxica. Now, the rest of the slots are pretty easy. You've just got your, uh, basically, gloves and boots. Uh, very stock standard life, resistances, and obviously move speed on the boots. In the amulet slot, you can either, either have a rare amulet, or you can uh, choose the Hyrie's Truth. Now, Hyrie's Truth is really, really nice because it lets you uh, get a level 22 precision, making you very easily hit your uh, hit chance, 100% here, and giving you fizz damage to attacks. The cold damage to attacks actually doesn't do anything for the build because we use Brutality, you also do, however, get some global crit strike multi and some more physical damage leashed as life with that less reservation on precision. So it's a very, very good amulet there. And I would allocate swift skewering onto the amulet as well for some more impale shenanigans. I'll talk about that more in the uh, links section. Now, the rings, uh, basically, you're just wanting uh, steel rings with flat physical damage to attacks. These ones that shown right here might be a little bit too expensive, but you can just search for maybe lower physical damage to attacks, or not even a prefix there, just have the implicit, and then just search for life and resistances. Steel rings are going to be super nice for you. The one thing I would entirely recommend, however, is getting on both of your rings, or if you use a rare amulet, you can get on your amulet, is the channeling skills have negative to total mana cost. If I go over here and I change to my Desecrate and Cyclone here, we choose Cyclone, we have a mana cost of zero, which is uh, pretty much what you want on the build. Uh, having a mana cost of zero for your Cyclone is just going to be astronomically amazing, so I'd very much suggest uh, getting those two modifiers on at least two of your three uh, jewelry slots there. Last of all, you just want a good belt with life and resistances, and you can either get like a, uh, you know, a Stygian Vise with an Abyssal Jewel with flat physical damage, some, you know, resistances to cap things off and some life, or you can just go a good leather belt or anything like that as well. Uh, then the flasks themselves. We've got a Seething Divine Life Flask of Staunching. This is great just for your bleeding and instant recovery to save you. Uh, a Mandatory is a Diamond Flask because we are going full crit in this build. We've then got a Quicksilver Flask. Uh, I like to use Overflowing Chalice in budget builds just to be able to fill the rest of my flasks as much as I can. Uh, and, you know, it also gives you Consecrated Ground because we're not using a Bottled Faith in this version. But lastly, we uh, use Lion's Roar to end right there. Now, you do also see that I have a Cluster Jewel set up here. Now, this is actually just only a medium cluster, just with a couple of important nodes that I like to use on the build which are uh, Haunting Shout and Lead by Example. So Haunting Shout taunts your enemies, and uh, sorry, it means that your haunted enemies are intimidated. They take 10% increased uh, physical damage. And Lead by Example, basically permanent onslaught. Onslaught, you and nearby allies gain onslaught when you war cry. Uh, this, this is just really, really, really strong. Uh, definitely check uh, that one out right there. And lastly, a Katava's Teaching. Now, the only reason I really use a Medium Cluster is to also fit in Katava's Teaching. Now, this gives you the keystone of Disciple of Katava. Disciple of Ka Katava means that every second, you consume a nearby corpse to recover 5% of life and mana. Uh, and you have 10% more damage taken if you haven't consumed a corpse recently. However, uh, you have always consumed a corpse recently because you're always spawning corpses with Desecrate. Uh, so basically, Katava's Teaching is just um, absolutely disgustingly amazing. Uh, so definitely pick up Katava's Teaching. I would say if there was a second mandatory unique item for the build, it would be Katava's Teachings. And lastly, just some jewels with any sort of combination of life and crit multi or crit chance. Uh, for the budget version, we're not crit capped, so getting crit chance over crit multi is probably going to be better. Uh, but um, a bit of crit multi doesn't hurt as well. With Abyssus, we're still hitting around about 500% critical strike multiplier right there. So that is the budget uh, version of all of the gear. We're going to talk about the links now, what you're going to be using in the budget version. Now, spoiler alert, the links in the budget version are going to be almost exactly the same as the links in the endgame version, just albeit not using... Uh, not using Awakened Gems. So we will start with the main skill, which is our Blade Flurry and our General's Cry, or Perforate as well. Uh, you can choose between the two there. So we link Blade Flurry with General's Cry, 
uh, and then melee physical damage, brutality, impale, and pulverize. Now, I would say that if you do not have a six link, you don't want uh, physical uh, melee physical damage. You go with the five links of General Scribe, Brutality, Impale, and Pulverize. Uh, and if you, for some reason, only have a four link, I would suggest taking out Pulverize as well and just going General Scribe, Brutality, Impale right there. You don't need any sort of attack speed ever because your generals, uh, they don't scale with attack speed. They basically get spawned. They do one single attack. They can't be linked with multi-strike, anything like that. They'll do one attack and then they'll go away. That is why something like Perforate is really nice, because it hits so many times when you're in Blood Stance. Uh, so Perforate is actually a really, really nice build, because you, uh, uh, skill I mean, because you can switch between Perforate uh, and the uh, uh, single target version and the clearing version with the Blood Stance Sand Stance. Talking about Blood Stance and Sand Stance, we're going to look at our aura setup. Now the three auras that we're pretty much using here are Dread Banner, Pride, and Blood and Sand, with also using Precision on High Reach Truth. If you're not using a high risk truth, you actually put precision in here, and I would suggest putting precision a bit lower uh, level, uh, because otherwise you're going to start to run out of mana over here uh, in the unreserved mana. So uh, put your precision around about level 11 to level 14 if you're not using the high risk truth to get that 50% less reservation. Then our movement, we've just got dash and second win. That's what, just what I like to use the most on this build. You can use flame dash if you want to. You can even use shield charge uh, with faster attacks, but I do prefer the dash second wind and portal because this is three green links for our scaver sword as well. Then we're moving on to uh, a couple of buff things. I like to put this in my shield, just, you know, berserk and vile ancestral war chief there. Now this is just basically, you just press these two buttons when you come across a boss and you'll just decimate the boss right there. Our Cyclone setup. Now, on the budget version, we don't have Fortify Boots, so you're going to be using Fortify in your main links. It's basically a four link of Cyclone, cast while channeling Desecrate, and then link to Fortify as well. So you always have that Fortify uptime whenever you've hit a mob recently. And lastly, a Cast When Damage Taken setup. Now, this is my preference. You may choose to have a larger or, or more leveled Cast When Damage Taken, but I choose to have level three Cast When Damage Taken, level 11 Molten Shell, and level five Summon Ice Golem. Now the reason it's so specific, if you don't know how Cast One Damage Taken works, uh, basically the required level of Cast One Damage Taken, which as you can see here, is level 42. Uh, the skills, the active skills that are linked to this must be level 42 or below to be activated when uh, with Cast One Damage Taken. If I level the Ice Golem one more level up to level uh, 6, or uh, requiring level 44, it will not proc with Cast One Damage Taken. So level 11 and level 5, but support gems like increased duration, they can be leveled up as much as you want, and they're still going to link to things like Molten Shell right there. Um, if you don't want to use increased duration, you can instead use something like Blood Rage to have more consistent uh, Frenzy Charges while you're mapping. Just keep in mind you will uh, degen a little bit of health doing that. That is the links. So that's both the, the budget uh, gear and the budget links. I hope this all made sense. If you've got any questions whatsoever, jump down below. If you don't have the currency for the end game stuff, you can skip below as well to the passive tree skill, uh, passive skill tree section, where we will be starting with the budget version as well, including the entire leveling tree and some uh, champion stuff there as well. But I'm going to jump now to the end game version of the build. All right, is the juiciness of the end game ZHP full DPS Berserker. Uh, now, I, I will be talking about the champion also in this section, and I'll put time stamps uh, down below as well. So we'll go through all of that. Uh, and we've actually had a, uh, a POB provided by Devil May, one of my viewers. So thank you so much, Devil May, for the hardcore champion version that they've been playing of this build. Uh, they uh, basically sent over their hardcore version, and it looks pretty primo, so we're going to have a good look at that one there as well. But first of all, we're going to look here at the Berserker version. <clears throat> so, first of all, as you can see up the top here, Paradoxica. Now, Paradoxica is an insanely good weapon for this build. I've already talked about it, and what you're going to want to look for is anywhere above 185 uh, physical DPS right here. Basically, the highest roll of physical damage that you can have on a Paradoxica is the best for the build. So uh, I, I just suggest uh, searching around. They can go anywhere from like, you know, 5 to 15 to 20 exalts, depending on the rolls. 
Uh, so you're going to pay a little bit for this, uh, but uh, hopefully it's not going to send you uh, too uh, far into the negative exalt ratios. Now, obviously, Red Blade Banner, still best in slot. You can even try and get a good corrupted one. I don't have a good corrupted one myself. All of this gear that you are seeing here is completely, this is all the gear in game. This is not POB Warrior. Uh, me tweaking things. All of this is completely in-game. Uh, so, Red Blade Banner, uh, you can, you know, choose to do anything with that if you would like to uh, corrupt it, but it just basically make sure you got high life on it and you're good. Now, Abyssus, once again I am using Abyssus, but I do also have the General's Cry having plus one maximum number of Mirage Warriors. Now, this is very expensive. Uh, it can range from 20 to 30 Exalted Orbs, even more if they start to get bought up when this video comes out, so I'm sorry if that happens. However, you're going to get almost the same power, uh, depending on what skill that you're using. Uh, you either use uh, Perforate has plus two spikes, or you just do uh, Blade Flurry damage. Uh, it's still going to be a lot for you. However, the plus one maximum number of Mirage Warriors is the best. It's effectively a 20% more multiplier to your damage, because you go from maximum of five generals to a maximum of six generals. So, five to six is 100 to 120, that's 20% uh, more. Uh, so that is uh, very, very nice right there. Once again, you can use Dade Bellow if you would like to instead of the Abyssus if you're taking too much damage. Dade Bellow is a really, really good option as well there. And honestly, you're not going to notice, if you've got all of this gear, you're not going to notice the difference between Dade Bellow and Abyssus uh, in, in the damage. Now, for the body armor, my body armor is actually not that amazing right now. I just decided to go for, you know, quite a bit of life on it, a little bit of cold res, and mainly attacks having plus two critical strike chance, base critical strike chance. This is just meaning that I'm getting to 99.51% effective crit chance, although without this, I'm now still sitting at 96. So I'm considering, we can see here, it's only a 2.3% uh, uh, more multiplier there. I'm considering doing something else like maybe... Uh, maybe, you know, an extra curse or something like that could feel really, really nice for the build. You can also use an explode chest in the build. Now, your generals don't actually proc the explode. However, because you're still dealing a lot of damage with your cyclone and clearing trash mobs with your cyclone and you're scaling fizz damage, uh, that explode is going to proc a lot and it will explode whole packs. It will still feel very nice for clear. Uh, so feel free to use an explode chest if you'd like to here. Now, Hands of the High Templar, I find, uh, are probably the best in slot, and I've only got two values on here. You could even get, you know, an extra Frenzy Charge, uh, or you could get, you know, a Second Curse or something like that if you want a chess piece with an extra curse. But I've just got the two uh, kind of necessary ones, I would say, which is Vulnerability on Hit and Attacks having Critical Strike Chance. Uh, so those two are really, really needed there as well, and then uh, just getting, obviously, high increased life there as well. The boots uh, are just looking for move speed, uh, resistance. I don't even have life on these boots here because I just haven't been bothered even slamming life on with Harvest, but you do 100% want that supported by level 20 Fortify. This means that you don't have to run Fortify in your Cyclone Links and can instead run Infused Channeling. Infused Channeling is going to give you a little bit more damage overall, and it's also going to make sure that you take less physical damage, uh, so it's very, very nice uh, to get the Fortify on the boots. The amulet itself, uh, as you can see here, this amulet also does not have life on it because I am very lazy, and that's why I only have 4.9k life here. But uh, basically, it's uh, fizz damage to attacks and elemental resistances. Nothing crazy here. Honestly, you can get a lot more damage out of a really, really nice amulet. Uh, but I allocate swift skewering there as well. Uh, the kind of mods that you're looking for for the endgame amulet, obviously, are the tier 1 physical damage to attacks and crit multi. Those two are going to be absolutely amazing for you. Then the rings themselves. Now these rings are a little bit better. Uh, you do need quite a bit of dexterity on the build. You need around about 212 dexterity in total to be able to fit everything in. So uh, the rings and a little bit on the amulet as well. Uh, dexterity is very important. I then went for some high strength as well to give me some more life and obviously physical damage with attacks there on a steel ring. Uh, and then Ellie Reses on the bottom, and then uh, another Steel Ring with just resistances, Fizz damage to attacks, and some uh, channeling skills uh, having negative 3 to total mana cost there, coupled with Katava's teachings, I'm just sustaining it all. And lastly, Rislatha's Coil. Now, Rislatha's Coil is best in slot belt for this build, uh, in my opinion. 
uh, you can uh, basically, what, what you'd want to do is you want to get 40 more maximum physical attack damage and 30 less minimum physical attack damage. So roll kind of the two high ends of that. It might be quite a few divine orbs until you hit it. Once you hit that, you can then also quality it with attack catalysts to go to 48 and 36, which is a three, almost 4% more damage uh, multiplier above the 30 to 40. Uh, and that's also going to buff up your fizz damage to attacks there as well. And lastly, the flasks are the same as the budget version. You've got your life flask, your divine life flask, your diamond flask, quicksilver, and your lion's roar. But obviously, we're using a bottle of faith because it's uh, it's the end game version. And you know, if you're looking at this, you've probably got the currency to invest into it. So that's all the gear, uh, and uh, hopefully there's a couple of options there as well. The biggest option, as I did say, was the abyssus switching for Dade Bellow, or you can even just go a, uh, a normal kind of helmet uh, with. I think it's an, an Elder mod, right? The uh, negative, or, or the uh, basically, yeah, negative to uh, physical damage resistance, or nearby enemies take more physical damage, I, I think is the uh, is the modifier. You can go for a rare helmet with that. You're going to be super, super strong. Uh, now, last of all, the cluster jewels and the other jewels are very important for the build. The first things I'm going to talk about are the large cluster jewels. Now, I've got one large cluster jewel uh, that is uh, attack damage while holding a shield with advance guard, precise retaliation, and smite the weak. This is just giving me uh, move speed while holding a shield, giving me crit, strength, uh, crit chance and crit multi if we're blocked, uh, and then also giving a uh, chance to maim our enemies and increased attack damage against those maimed enemies. So I do take all three of the nodes on this cluster, and then the other large cluster uh, is uh, a just increased physical damage one. We've got Furious Assault, Ironbreaker, and Master the Fundamentals. Now, Furious Assault and Ironbreaker are the two front nodes, and we do take those ones, but Master the Fundamental we don't take because it's not doing too much for our build at all. The medium cluster jewels are basically just any variations of how you would like to do these four cluster jewels. They are all exerted attack steal increased damage, and the modifiers you're looking for uh, are Haunting Shout, at least one Haunting Shout, at least one Mob Mentality. Uh, you're then also looking for at least one Lead by Example. And then to finish off any number of Provocateurs or Warning Calls is there. So Provocateur for Damage and Warning Call for Armor or Survivability. Uh, I'll basically go over that again in the Passive Skill Tree section, but that is all of that. The last thing that I want to mention is the Watcher's Eye. I went for a Precision Pride Watcher's Eye, giving me Crit Multi with Precision and Attack Physical Damage with Pride. This only cost me about 11 Exalts. Uh, if you went for a Double Precision with the exact same modifiers, it's about triple the price. So look for Precision and Pride together uh, and see what kind of mods you can get there. And the very uh, last thing, once again, Katava's teachings and the Crimson Jewels. So uh, I've got Crimson Jewels that basically have life and two crit multi mods here. So we reach around about 625 crit multi uh, with how many How many Crimson Jewels? One, two, three, four. Uh, well, basically four Crimson Jewels on the build there as well. Uh, now you can go even further and you can get three property crit multi jewels with life as well, but they're going to run you like at least 10 exalts each. So, you know, they're, they're fairly expensive. Uh, but that's all I really have to say about the build uh, and the gear for the endgame version. Let's just quickly look at the skills. I'm actually not going to jump over the skills much at all because as I did say in the budget version, if you want to jump back, that, uh, back there for the skills, it's almost exactly the same. Uh, just albeit a little bit changed on the actual uh, gems themselves in the main links. Instead of using normal melee fizz and uh, normal brutality, we're just using awakened melee fizz and awakened brutality. That's basically it. Everything stays the same. Now remember to quality up all of your items. Uh, sorry, all of your um, uh, <laughs> all of your gems. Uh, and the very last thing that has changed as well is because we're no longer using Hyrie's Truth for Precision, we're chucking Precision in here, we're actually leveling Precision up to level 20, and including a level 4 Enlighten for our Pride Dread Banner, uh, Dread Banner Precision right there, and then just having Blood and Sand just in a random link, and that should still leave you at around about 14% unreserved mana, so you're totally fine to even get a level 21 uh, Precision there as well. It's going to be absolutely fine for you. So that is everything. Uh, I'm going to do a quick cut right here and we're going to talk about the champion hardcore version all right it's time to talk about champion 
Now, I did mention that this is a hardcore version of the build. Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side there, we're hitting around about 8 thousand total life uh, with a lot more mitigation through uh, fortify and the armor as well and getting some pretty high resistances here as well uh, however you can even go more into the defense and less off the offense and vice versa so i'm just going to be running over uh, what uh, devil may has here on this character and how he's been playing it uh, but then i'll also talk about um uh, basically how you can mix and match the gear that you've got here. You know, maybe you can play a hardcore berserker, depending on certain things. Uh, but uh, all of the gear that you see here and the gear on the uh, on the previous characters, they can be mixed and matched together uh, to kind of create your own combination of how you want this build to work. Obviously, as I said, I'm playing the full DPS version, and this is kind of the flip side of that. This is the uh, the full tanky champion version with not as much DPS, but you're still going to be absolutely decimating everything in the game and all content viable. Apart from uh, Uber at Ziri, you're still going to one-shot yourself to that one. Uh, so, uh, first of all, Paradoxica and Red Blade Banner. There's very staple for this build. These two are just the best. Uh, and uh, we are then looking at the helmet itself. Uh, basically, what you want on the helmet is Fortify Effect. Now, Fortify Effect is really, really good. Uh, it's very strong for any sort of build that uses Fortify, and especially for Champion. And then getting Chance to Avoid Elemental Elements there is really nice, because we're stacking a few Chance to Avoid Elements uh, on different parts of the build. Uh, the chest piece itself does have attacks having a critical strike chance, and then basically life and resistances and chance to avoid uh, elemental ailments. So basically exactly the same as my softcore chest piece, honestly, uh, and I would say that this is a really, really strong way of going about it. Now, the gloves themselves, uh, it's basically uh, any sort of gauntlet that you want to use with uh, any sort of life and resistances. Uh, there is cold damage and fire damage uh, added on these gloves here, but that's really, you don't need to worry too much about that. The main thing is just getting life and uh, resistances on these and avoiding elements craft as well. But dexterity is also nice to get on the gloves there. If you can fit in uh, added physical, you can, uh, even with harvest, you can remove add, uh, sorry, you can remove the cold or remove the fire and then, you know, add physical uh, and keep re-rolling physical until you hit some flat fizz. That's going to be very nice right there. The boots themselves, same sort of thing. It's uh, move speed, resistances, fortify, right? That's just going to be really, really nice for you. Amulet, you're looking for uh, any combination of global crit multi, increased armor, maximum life. Uh, the non-channeling skills have negative 7 to total mana cost and flat physical damage to attacks here as well. So uh, you can see here that uh, crystal skin has been allocated for some more uh, resistances. Uh, but, you know, if you want a little bit more damage, I would uh, suggest, you know, going into some other damage anointment there. The rings are, well, first of all, we've got basically an Assassin's Mark on Hit Ring. Uh, I would probably prefer a Poacher's Mark ring on this build, but Assassin's Mark is really, really nice. And you can get physical damage to attacks, life and resistances, and the channeling skills right there. And once again, life, resistances, fizz damage to attacks, dexterity, just making sure you balance that all, and the channeling skills. And lastly, ending with a Rislatha's Coil, once again for a very, very good damage. Uh, flasks, basically you're looking for your Divine last, uh, Life Flask of Staunching. You're looking for your Lion's Roar, your Diamond Flask, your Quicksilver. And then a Sulphur Flask is very nice as well for the Consecrated Ground on use. You can either just use a normal Sulphur Flask or you can use the, uh, the Chalice, which I like to use. But this is nice because we get warding here. We do have warding on two flasks though, so I would say go for the Chalice. It's probably going to be a little bit better. And then lastly, the Cluster Jewels. It's any combination of Cluster Jewels, like I said in the previous thing. Uh, that you want to use. So the modifiers that are really, really nice are uh, things like uh, Provocateur, Warning Call, uh, and then uh, Lead by Example, Mob Mentality, and Haunting Shout as well. Uh, this uh, version has one cluster jewel set up, one large and two mediums, uh, and then there's a Thread of Hope there as well. The one thing that I would actually say on this build is instead of using one of these Viridian Jewels, you do what I was uh, suggesting before and using Katava's Teaching. Katava's Teaching is absolutely amazing for the build and helps your sustain so much in almost every part of the entire game. So Katava's Teaching um, is an absolutely amazing, uh, unique cluster jewel to use. Uh, so definitely get that one there. 
So that's basically the hardcore version. You're going to feel absolutely crazily tanky with all of this, and your damage is still going to be more than adequate for all of the content in the game. As I said, you know, mix and match between the uh, Champion Ascendancy, the Berserker Ascendancy, all that kind of stuff, which we'll talk about in the next section, which is the Skill Tree section. I'll just talk about all of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, use your own judgment. If you want crazy damage in Softcore, Berserker's your way to go. If you want to be really tanky and not deal as much damage, but, you know, never die, Champion is the way to go for you. I'm not going to say too much more because we're going to jump to the links. We're going to start with budget, then we're going to go to end game. So the budget and end game of the uh, Marauder, the Berserker version, and then talking about champion at the end there. As I said, I am focusing mainly on the Berserker here. You've noticed I haven't talked too much about budget versions of the champion. However, just play the champion and copy paste the budget items from the Berserker to the champion. You're going to be totally fine. All right, let's get to the passive skill trees. Passive skill trees. We all love them, well, hopefully, but uh, we all definitely need them to level a build. So I'm going to showcase, first of all, the Softcore Berserker version, talk about some Hardcore Ascendancy options if you want to go more into the Hardcore route, uh, and then we're going to go into the end game passive skill tree with the clusters, and then talk about Champion at the end there as well. So, first of all, the uh, ascendancies for the softcore budget version of the build uh, are uh, basically right here. So we've got Warbringer, Pain Reaver, As Aspect of Carnage, and Flawless Savagery. Now there's a couple of things I should mention here. Uh, these are kind of up to you how you would like to choose them. If you feel like you're going to be able to survive in the story, Aspect of Carnage is just a really nice pickup, either first or second. Uh, and then Warbringer to complement that as well. I would suggest Warbringer first and uh, Aspect of Carnage second. Then looking at Pain Reaver third and Flawless Savagery for your Uber Lab right there as well. Now obviously right here, Aspect of Carnage is basically the softcore option. So if you weren't going Aspect of Carnage, I would actually spec into Crave the Slaughter. Now a lot of people would ask me, why not go into Blitz? You get a ton more attack speed. Uh, now the thing with Blitz is you do not need attack speed at all on this build. Attack speed is going to be doing nothing for you. Uh, so instead going into Crave the Slaughter just means basically you get 10 extra rage or another very viable option is actually just going to uh, one small node here and one small node there that's a very very uh, yeah like a, a super super good option or you can even just go these two nodes here as well that's an absolutely fine option if you don't feel uh, you don't feel good about taking aspect of carnage so that's all I would say there now, down in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, you won't really be able to see it with my uh, mouse right here because it's going off stream, but there is a, uh, a, a tree section here. Um, uh, basically, there's a drop-down that you'll be able to click on that has uh, basically uh, your 20-point tree uh, with ascendancy options. 20 points, uh, 40 points, uh, oh, that's 60 points, sorry, 40 points, 60 points, 80 points. 100 points and then the full budget endgame tree there as well uh, but to just talk about some notable things here that we're focusing on uh, unwavering stance cooldown recovery through deep breaths uh, some other cooldown recovery here in escalation for our war cry and natural authority instant war cries a bunch of life uh, and then obviously our cluster jewel here with the disciple of katava on the end uh, and then picking up some crit nodes, sword nodes, and impale nodes around the place. Finishing off with things like a Rampart and dis Dismembering here as well. That's basically how the tree goes. So the POBs are all down below if you want to follow along. Uh, let's do a shortcut into the hardcore version of the passive skill tree. Oh, sorry, not hardcore version, the, the end game version. And then the hardcore champion version. Let's go. The endgame tree is fairly similar to the budget tree of the Berserker. The ascendancy points are exactly the same, and what I talked about on the budget version is pretty much the same. If you do uh, want to just basically not take as much damage through Aspect of Carnage, you can just go into these two nodes here, because nothing else is really that important uh, for your ascendancy. These three nodes alone carry so, so much. But uh, yeah, it's basically those four nodes there. Now the tree itself uh, is just picking up the necessary life nodes. Uh, as you can see in the, here, we only have 107% increased life from tree because this is the full kind of DPS version, no HP version, but you can definitely sacrifice some DPS for some more HP. Uh, I would probably do it in the form of maybe losing one of the clusters. Now the clusters themselves are pretty, pretty simple. Uh, we did talk about that in the uh, gear 
section, so I'm not really going to go over it. But basically, this tree is very, very easy to follow. If you're wanting a leveling tree, it's in the budget POB, which is down below. Uh, but there's not really much I should say about this other than picking up sword nodes, crit nodes, war cry nodes, life nodes, and your clusters. That is pretty much it. Uh, lastly, I'm going to talk about the champion, and uh, there's a little bit more to talk about there because it's an entirely new ascendancy, so I've got to go over everything and how it works with that character. So, let's cut to that one. Now, as I said, the champion obviously is a completely different ascendancy, uh, so you're going to want to be uh, adjusting slightly your tree to uh, fit how the champion actually does function. Now, first of all, the four nodes that we're taking on the Ascendancy are Master of Metal, Unstoppable Hero, uh, Conqueror, and Worthy Foe. Now, in order, I probably would honestly take them in a clockwise fashion, starting from Master of Metal. Uh, I, I think that's probably the best way to go about it. The really, really great thing here is uh, with uh, Taunted Enemies not being able to evade attacks, you don't need to stack any sort of accuracy. You don't need to go into Precision or anything like that, meaning you can fit in a... Uh, a pride, uh, sorry, a, uh, a flesh and stone maim set up in your links. Well, Unstoppable Hero just giving you good armor and evasion. Get some great attack speed there for uh, moving around, although that's not actually helping with your damage uh, per se. The Master of Metal is going to be helping you a ton with your damage with Paradoxica. Tree itself does follow a similar outline to the Berserker. However, we want to pick up basically a lot more life, being a hardcore version. So we do tend to go up right up here to get some chaos res um, all through here. Uh, so come out of the uh, duelist starting area, jump right down here, pick up war cry nodes, get our cluster duel set up down here, some sword nodes, life nodes, your call to arms, your instant war cries, uh, and then up into your escalation. Then using a uh, very large thread of hope, hit all of this life node stuff here, and then deep breaths as well. Uh, is going to be really, really nice for you. If you would like to, you can also pick up uh, Inexorable, which is going to give you even more armor and more physical damage reduction and also regeneration of uh, life when you have your Endurance Charges up as well. So it's a pretty simple tree. Uh, definitely follow this one if you're planning to play any sort of champion. Um, and uh, I will include a leveling uh, guide as well, uh, just down in the bottom left um, the same with the budget version, uh, there'll be a leveling guide every 20 points for the champion version there as well. Now the last little thing that I do need to talk about, we're just going to take uh, basically a cut jump to the leveling process of this build and how it's actually going to function. So let's jump to that right now. Now I'm actually going to do this leveling section a little bit differently. Now the reason I'm doing it differently is because uh, leveling with General's Cry can be a little bit iffy at times if you don't have that Red Blade banner or depending on the ascendancy that you're playing. And so it's actually better just to level uh, with slams or anything like that, like Ground Slam, Double Strike. Uh, now I would usually go through all of the acts and show you the gems that you should pick up on that, but I'm actually giving you now uh, a, a video from Zizarin. Now Zizarin is, uh, if you don't know Zizarin, I don't know how you don't know Zizarin, he's an amazing Path of Exile player, uh, he's a racer, he plays in hardcore, uh, and all around got some really amazing content on YouTube. So there is a link down below to this video of how Zizarin levels a melee character to Act 9 in like three hours. So that's basically most of the leveling process itself. You can see on the side of the video there, the left hand side, he's got the gems that he likes to pick up and sock it in if you can do them in order. Uh, and uh, that does change as you go through the video and everything like that as well. So you can feel free to skip through the video, check certain parts. Uh, but basically you're just looking for, you know, any sort of probably two-handed weapon uh, to use the vendor recipe uh, of the, uh, the Rustic Sash recipe. If you don't know that recipe, definitely go and look it up. It's great to upgrade your weapons as you keep playing through. Just Ground Slam then into something like Earth Shatter or something like that is really, really nice to level up with. So I, I know that it's, uh, you know, not the same as me going through and talking about all of the gems that you should be picking up. Uh, but as you're playing through, just have my path of building open and then uh, check the vendors. Uh, you see any gems that you might want to level up for the General Scribe, pick those ones. But most of the gems uh, that you'll be picking up 
can be picked up both on Duelist and on Marauder. They are very, very similar uh, dual selections. So it's going to be very easy to level this build if you follow Zizarin's advice with this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to end this video with a big compilation of a lot of boss fights, uh, which might not take much time because the boss fights tend to go by quite quickly. They'll probably be like a serious maven, a bunch of other stuff as well. I'll just chuck, I'll just chuck everything in there. You can watch that if you'd like to. Uh, if not, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this kind of build guide or uh, think you're going to play it, let me know in the comments below and tell me if there's a build that you want to see next uh, from build guides uh, here. I'm going to be playing in my Badger Private League over the weekend, if you're watching this uh, right before the weekend on release. Uh, so definitely come watch at twitch.tv slash thisisbadgergaming. Uh, no, actually, I that was that was a mistake. Just this is Badger. I uh, I recently changed to just this is Badger. So twitch.tv slash thisisbadger. Come check us out. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Badger out. What? A thousand times. Here, your pain will be endless. My only consolation is that I am not alone in this torch. That was during bubble. No! Oh, that was close. That was really close. Alright, we're getting, uh, getting close to the damage. Alright, you guys ready? You guys ready for this? You ready? You ready? I don't know, I think Blade Flurry is better. I think Blade Flurry is better. The prize piece comes to join my collection. Pain will be returned tenfold. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Not too bad. Behold my collection. I will have what I want. 
Death will not be an escape. Right top right. Scurry, scurry. Death, stay what? real. Resistance will be punished. Time contorts. Scurry, scurry. My irritation is growing. Death will not be an escape. At least four DPS there? Yeah, at least four, I think. Scurry, scurry! Do what I say. How? Stop resisting. Bends. Punishment inescapable. Arrogant toy. This will not be an escape. Ah, damn it. All right. Uh, right, top, left, top. Left, right. Scurry, scurry. Right, top, left, top, left, right. My monarch is gone. Take this. I require aid. The living toy Perfect must loot. enjoy our contest. Perfect loot. Well, wow. that's uh, play, that's the damage. And I should do this again soon. Children are capricious, Nomad. Be warned. The memory of your sting will fade soon enough. And so too will her. That's the damage. It's not ethical. Not ethical.